Hi, and welcome back to Chemistry Videos with me, Clarissa Sorensen Unruh. Um, we are still working on organic synthesis <laughs> today because we really like organic synthesis quite a lot. And it seems to be something that's very confusing for a lot of organic students. So I'm doing basically organic one synthesis now. We could just as easily fit these ideas into an organic two synthesis. Okay, so I have my reaction up on the glass here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of approach it the way I approached the last video, if you happen to watch that, which was I'm going to look at what I have in the end. Okay, I'm looking at that and I'm saying, how in the world do I make that? <laughs> okay, well, we really have one way, right? So to add an alcohol on at the same time as a halide, we would use a reaction that's from the alkene chapter, right? So using we would have a double bond first, and I believe it's a halohydrin reaction. I think that's right. Okay, so halohydrins are Br2 first, and then you put in some water. Your first nucleophile is the halide. The second nucleophile is the water, and you basically do this under certain conditions. We could talk about that for a long period of time, but we won't. In terms of what we need to get to is we need to, need to know that this is basically the only way I know how to make that kind of configuration, an anti-addition of the halide and the alcohol, which means that I had to have a double bond between those to begin with. Right? It's a horrible rendition of that, but you got an idea. Woo, that's bad. I should have given myself a little more room to do that. Sorry. Okay, so in terms of looking at it, right, I look at that double bond and I'm like, well, that looks weird. Okay, I haven't changed the placing of these lovely um, R groups because they need to pretty much stay in the same place, which means that unless I'm going to be able to manipulate those somehow, which in the midst of the halohydrin, you don't. So what I need is I need some way to make that. The way I know how to make a cis alkene um, is from a triple bond, right? So a triple bond would allow me to make a cis alkene. And that's pretty much the only way we've done that. So if I had that triple bond there, then I know I have a group that is one, two, three. One, two, three, right? We know that triple bonds are basically linear in their configuration. So this is a little bit off to show this, um, this kind of configuration. It would be better if I had done it straight off. Let's go ahead and change that because then Everyone doesn't yell at me that says, oh, it's supposed to be linear. Yes, you're right. It is supposed to be linear. There it is. One, two, three. There you go. All right. And then I have the triple bond as well right there. And then I need to figure out how many uh, bonds I have in this R group. One, two, three. Looks kind of like the same thing I just did there, except I flipped it a little bit. OK. So that's kind of interesting. That's a triple bond. And that triple bond, I know that the only way to go from uh, anything to making an alkene is with H2. And Lindler's ca Lindlar's catalyst. Lindlar's catalyst is um, what we've learned, right? And you're trying to use reactions that you've learned in the midst of your organic chemistry preparation here. So in terms of thinking about this, this H2 and the Lindler's catalyst tells me that it's a reduction. How did I know that it was supposed to be a triple bond to begin with? Because you can't reduce into an alkene from an alkene. If you reduced from an alkene, it would go into an alkane. So you have to start with something that has more multiple bonds to begin with. And pretty much triple bond maxes out the multiple bonds we got for carbon chemistry. And so we know that we have to go from 
that alkane, I'm uh, sorry, that alkyne to an alkene. Woo, last one. The last one, I'm working entirely backwards here, by the way, because this was very hard to see where I was going. Okay, you could just say, you could say, hey, this has an alkyne and it has um, some more carbon to carbon bonds than I expect. <laughs> but having said that, it's kind of where we are. Okay, so we need that triple bond to come. We can do that in one step, um, that one step or one arrow. One arrow is a little dicey here because we're actually going to do two different reactions in the midst of that one step, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to think about what kinds of reactions I have with a terminal alkyne. That's what this is, right? A terminal alkyne is a, a triple bond at the end. With the triple bond at the end, I actually have the opportunity, if I use some strong base, to cut off the last H here that's coming off, not shown, by the way, and make that into an anion. And then that anion could react with a, a halide, an alkyl halide, and make something longer. Hmm. All right, so the kind of idea that I'm using here is that I look at this, I say, hey, that's a terminal alkyne. What can I do with the terminal alkyne? Pretty much the only thing we've learned how to do with the terminal alkyne at this point is use it in some kind of SN2 reaction. So that's what we got. All right, so let's do it. All right, so one, I would have to cut off that last H. I'm going to use one of my favorite um, strong bases, good electrophiles. I mean, not sorry, <laughs> good, <laughs> good nucleophile. Woohoo! Base, nucleophile, same thing. Um, on a lot of cases, not always, so don't, don't catch me on that. But in terms of this, I want this NH2 with a minus to be used to cut off that last H. I can do that, awesome. I also need it to react. Okay, so kind of what we're doing here in terms of trying to see it for everyone who's like, I have no idea what you're doing. Here's what we're doing, all right? We're using this NH, Two. Ooh, there it is. And NH2 is awesome because it has two lone pairs and a minus charge. Those lone pairs are really awesome nucleophiles. So here, I'm going to take that. I'm doing it in the same color, aren't I? Sorry. Sorry. Hey, there we go. And I'm going to attack that H. The electrons from that go right on to the end there. And I form NH3, and I form, I've just made myself a carbanion. Carbanions are really difficult to make. And one of the only times that we've learned how to make these is with this kind of idea, with the terminal alkyne. Why, can, why are carbanions hard to make? because carbon is extremely unstable with a lone pair on it. Doesn't like it very much. Okay, so in terms of looking at this, why does a terminal alkyne suddenly make it okay to have this lone pair at the end on a carbon? The reason why it's okay is because the alkyne has a lot of electron density and it already has quite a few uh, pi, it has the two sets of pi electrons going on and it's a little bit easier for that carbon to handle the anion if you have those pi electrons. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to react this as if it were like this nucleophile and I need to react it with something that can have a leaving group. All right, so what kind of leaving group do I, what kind of um, leaving group do I need? The one we know really well at this point is an alkyl halide. And so I need some kind of Br, or Cl, or something hooked to some carbon chain. How long does the carbon chain need to be? Well, the terminal alkyne does not, the, in the midst of this SN2 that I'm going to do, ooh, SN2 reaction, 
The SN2 reaction is such that I would want that halide to be at the end of whatever carbons I want, but the triple bond doesn't go away. It stays the same, which means that this half is going to become that half, right? So I have the triple bond, one, two, three, four. I think I have too many, too many carbons on one of these because this only has the triple bond and then one, two, three. I think I did too many carbons. One, two, three. Oh, that's right. The one, two, three. I, I can count. I promise. <laughs> it's not easy sometimes. All right, so let me just make sure that we all got this. The triple bond doesn't change. Here's the triple bond right here. Here's the triple bond right here. I got one, two, three carbons after it. Here's the triple bond. One, two, three carbons after it. My earrings are caffeine because I need some more. All right, so I need to figure out if I'm gonna have this halogen on the end of this molecule that that's gonna be the nucleophile for. I need to figure out how long it needs to be. So assuming that the height halogen, this is the carbon, right? This is the carbon that has the lone pair on it. It needs to react with this carbon so I need to have, that's going to be this carbon right here. One, two, three. I need a chain that's one, two, three long. Okay. Let's react it. That guy is going to react right here in a concerted reaction. It's a backside attack. That leaving group is going to leave. And suddenly I have it on. So I need this as my second step, right? I took off the... Um, the uh, hydrogen at the end of that terminal alkyne made a carbanion with this step. Now, to react it, I need that alkyl halide. Does that look about right? Seems like a plan. And you have a mechanism down here. I really wrote out the mechanism to tell you what was going on, but indeed, Actually, you don't need to write out mechanisms in the midst of organic synthesis unless you're explicitly told to do so. Okay. So, in that case, I got from here to here in three steps, and it wasn't as big of a deal as you might have thought it was just looking at it. Sometimes people look at this part and freak out. Do not freak out. It's just a time to use your puzzle-solving skills. So become Sherlock Holmes in terms of organic chemistry and put together the steps. Until I see you next.